All right, so you should know what bonds are. I'm not going to sit here and define all this, so if you want to pause it and write this down, it's totally fine. Uh, but a chemical bond is really just something scientists have come up with. Remember we talked about with Lewis structures that we know that the carbons and hydrogens are arranged in this fashion in methane. Well, technically we have this. Well, let's look at something a little bit easier. How about water? We know that the hydrogens in water are going to be in this arrangement. They're not in this arrangement here. Right? We know that there's a bent shape to the hydrogens in, 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 the, in the water molecule. Um, but what's holding them there? Well, why is it that this hydrogen is, is you know, not moving away and not you know, getting away from the, uh, the oxygens? Is there's an energy or a force holding them together? We just draw a line and say, hey, you know what? We're going to call that a bond. And that's it. I mean, technically, those bonds aren't there. We don't see them. We just see the atom oxygen, and we see the atoms hydrogen and hydrogen. We don't see that force that's holding them, just like you don't see a magnetic force holding magnets together. That's the idea behind bonds, and that's an energy that we have in here. So in order to react this, I need to break that bond. I need to break this bond. In order to break these bonds, energy has to be added to this. So if I break this down into oxygen and hydrogen atoms, I have to sever those bonds in half. And bring them. Think about magnets, right? If you're holding two magnets and you pull them apart, you pull one magnet away from the other one, well, you have to put energy in there to do that, don't you? You have to add energy to pull them apart. And if you let them go, they're going to spring back and join back together, and that would release energy. So the point here is that energies are added you have to, to say this again. You have to add energy to break a bond. Energy is released when bonds formed. Very, very important. This is the concept that they test quite a bit on the AP test. They've been looking at whether you know this general idea. Bond lengths, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second, but that's secondary to everything we're talking about here anyway. So anyway, if we look at some data here, these are bond energies that have been devised. So scientists have said, okay, carbon uh, in methane, there's four hydrogens. Oh, that looks terrible. Let's change that. There's a carbon with four hydrogens all around. Okay, you know it's going to be in a tetrahedral shape. Now, this entire molecule has a certain amount of energy that's holding all of those atoms together. Scientists just came up with this idea that, you know what, we're going to divide this into four even bonds. Okay, we, we, it's not necessarily true. Maybe that's not what's going on, but we know that these atoms act as a group, as an aggregate, as a, as a, as a function of, of, of one piece, but we're going to tear this atom off and break this bond. The scientists have devised, they figured out how much energy it needs to break this whole thing down, and then they divided it by four, because there's they say that there's four bonds in here. So this is an energy that's holding these two atoms together. That's what this number is here. This is the energy holding hydrogen and carbon together in any hydrocarbon. Now this is an approximation. This is not the actual value because this changes if there's more atoms in there. But that's okay because we want to get an approximation anyhow. All right, so this is a list of all the energies for various bonds that we would find in our chemical. So all we have to do is we can say, okay, what's the energy of this? Well, I have a carbon. It's ugly again, but I'm not going to change it this time. Um, a carbon and a hydrogen bond, what well, we would say that there's four of them, so we would say four times 460, uh, 413, and we would be able to figure out the energy of this roughly, and that's the game we're going to play, okay? It's kind of a mad ability, you know, just adding up all the bonds in the molecules. Now take a look at double bonds and triple bonds. Well, the energies are going to be a lot more, because as we look at bonds, remember the, the closer atoms get, remember this from first semester? The closer atoms get, the stronger the bonds. So double bonds are shorter, triple bonds are even stronger. So if we look at the bond length, a single bond, double bond, triple bond. Actually, we can look at this a little more closely on this slide here. So since we're sharing more electrons in a double bond, we're going to have the electron, or the atoms are going to get closer together. So we see that our bond length goes down. As a result, our bond energy goes up. You don't have to worry about these specific numbers. We just kind of took them off of that chart. Um, and as we go from a double bond to a triple bond, we see that the energies, the, le the length gets shorter and the energy goes up. So the moral here is that single bonds are longer and weaker, triple bonds are shorter and stronger. That's really what you want to get out of this. Okay, that's the general idea. All right, so what do we do with this nonsense? Well, what we do is we can actually figure out our changes in enthalpy for a particular reaction. 
So what is the change in enthalpy for this reaction? That's what I'm going to try to find. Okay. So what I can do is I can sum up all the bond energies. Now this is kind of tedious, so you got to be careful here. First thing I would do if they ask you to do something like this. Now I purposely chose one that's a little bit longer uh, just so you can kind of see all the ins and the outs of the problem. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this out from bonds broken and bonds formed. Over here are my reactants. In order to get these reactants to react, I have to break these bonds. So bonds are broken on this side. So in order to do that, my change in enthalpy for the reactants is going to be positive. right? So my change in enthalpy for reactants has to be a positive because this looks sloppy. Change in enthalpy for the reactants has to be positive. Why? Because energy has to be added in, has to be endothermic. Over here, bonds are formed. Now you can go ahead and look in the book and find a different way of doing this. I personally like doing it this way because one, I'm reinforcing that idea of bonds broken, energy released, or added, bonds formed, energy released. So my products are going to be negative because these are energies that are being formed. Okay. So what are the energies? Well, if I look at this structure, I need to know what kind of bonds are in the substance here. So I'm going to draw the Lewis structure for this. Now this is an organic molecule known as ethane. Um, ethane. Hydrogen here, 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 and here. Okay, then I have that added to oxygen, which has a double bond here. And on this side of the reaction, I have carbon dioxide, and you should know how to draw Lewis structures. Oh, by the way, this would probably be a good idea, a good time to go back and review Lewis structures if you need to, because you're probably going to want to know how to draw these. Okay, and then of course, water. Everybody should know water. Okay, I'm not going to draw the, all the valence electrons here, but these are the Lewis. So what I'm looking at are all these bonds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum up the energy for the ethane, for the oxygen, for the carbon dioxide, and for the water. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'll do this one first, and then I'll kind of speed up the other ones. So I have in here one carbon carbon bond. I have six carbon hydrogen bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one. So what I'm going to do is I plug in the numbers. So this would be one times. Uh, we go back to that chart, but I already have it here. So it's 348, and then I would have six. Oops, wrong way times 413. So if I sum all of that up, multiply that out and add these all up, I can figure out the energy associated with this molecule. And that comes out to 2,826 kilojoules. Okay. Now the oxygen, if you look it up on the chart, there's only one of them, and the double bonded oxygen has an energy of 495 kilojoules. Okay, so I've already calculated all the energy. So this is the energy for ethane. This would be my CH, C2H6. Uh, this would be O2 here. This would be the carbon dioxide. And this would be the water. Okay, so those are the energies associated with each of those molecules. Now, if I go back, I have to look at the coefficients that are in here, right? So each one of those has a different coefficient. So that means that I'm going to have to multiply this one by 2, multiply this by 7, multiply this by 4 and multiply this by 6 because that's how many of those I have. This is the energy of one molecule of water but I have six of them so I need to multiply this by 6 so I'm going to multiply this by 6 I'm going to multiply this by 4 I'm going to multiply this by 7 and of course as I said I'm going to multiply this one by 2 because I have twice as many of those molecules in there. Okay, So I'm going to do that in the next slide. I'm going to pause this and, and do that for you. What I did was I took those calculations that I have for each of the individual compounds. So this was my C2H6. This was the oxygen. This is the carbon dioxide. And this was the water value. And I have to multiply them by the coefficients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum all of this up and I'll show you what I'll do next. Okay, so on this side of the reaction, what I've done is I've added, I've multiplied this by 2, multiplied this by 7, got the results here, got my result here, added those two numbers up. So this is the energy of the reactants. Okay, so this is the amount of energy that I have to break in order for this reaction to happen. Over here, bonds are being formed. 
the bonds that are being formed are four times the carbon dioxide and six times the water. So I did those numbers, summed them up, and got this energy here. But this is energy formed, right? Bonds formed. So this energy is released. So I like to write the negative in there. Okay, so the energies that are listed in this chart here are all assuming that these are all positive. These are all endothermic. This is the energy that you have to overcome. You have to remember that when you are forming bonds, and this is why I like to do it this way because I'm reinforcing this idea, bonds broken, energy added, endothermic. Bonds reformed, energy released. Broken, added energy. Formed, released energy. So then what I do is I just basically sum up the two of these to get my overall change in enthalpy and I find the difference between how much energy is needed to break the bonds and how much energy is left over to be spit at, you know to be spit out of the reaction as heat and you would end up with 2831 kilojoules and that would be per moles of reactants per two of these seven of these uh, in the reaction okay and that's how you'd use bond energies I know it's very long and convoluted and I did one it's a little bit longer so you can kind of see the differences there um, but we'll look at it in class. Hopefully that helps, and I will uh, see you guys later.